Hello everyone, welcome to the numerical methods class. In this section, we will talk about the gradient-based optimization and also multidimensional and structural optimization. Basically, these parts actually um, are the topics of uh, my um, computer-aided design course as well. If you further want to have information about these, you can go and check my videos on the computer-aided design class. In here, I will give just the uh, initial uh, introduction of these and we will talk about these gradient based optimization methods as well without un uh, without constraints only unconstrained gradient based optimization let's start with the introduction to optimization basically optimization is the search process to find the best based on assumptions made and in the, in this respect uh, in linear algebra we have n variables and n equations as you know and we will have one unique solution we will actually learn how to solve these linear algebra equations and variables in the next section in chapter or section 9 uh, but for this case now um, this is just an introduction we will have this kind of uh, matrices and we have n equations here and n variables to, to find simply and we will have one unique solution but if we have n variables but m equations, if they, those are different, we have two different cases. If the number of equations m is greater than the variables n, then we will have zero solutions. Because we have less variables, uh, more equations, which will give us no solution. On the contrary, if we have m equations the number of equations actually smaller than the number of variables then we will have multiple solutions or infinite solutions in this scenario now we can use optimization to find a, the best solution among these solutions so not all the solutions are the best they are solutions but there is also one better solution and it is called optimized solution and we use optimization for this Basically, we find the best solution among multiple solutions. And we mentioned this in the previous videos as well. And we can either minimize a function or the opposite or minus of it. We can maximize it to find the optimum point, for instance. In this slide, we will check about the optimization formulation. And for the classical optimization problem formulation, we will have the process of finding the conditions that give the maximum or minimum value of a function. Simply, we will find some design variables. In terms of um, the mechanical engineering area, we will have design variables. Uh, but these are the unknowns in the function, for instance, axis. And we want to minimize or maximize some objective functions, fx. And these will be either subject to some constraints or not. But if we have constraints, then we can have a, a smaller or equal constraints or equal constraints. In other words, inequality and equality constraints we can have. And we will have bound constraints, which are the bounds of these. So these will not change in between infinities. So there will be some bounds, upper, lower bound and upper bound. So if the objective function is only one, uh, this gives us a single objective, then this formulation becomes a single objective optimization. But we can also have uh, multiple objectives. For example, we can minimize one function as minimize f1 and maximize f2. So we have two objectives now. And this is known as multi-objective. We can have further uh, more objectives here, more than two as well. It is called multi-objective optimization. So to be able to solve these, we want to actually uh, simplify this to have a single objective so that we can just solve a single objective to um, meet these two uh, conditions or optimization problems. For example, if we have only one minimization and one maximization, then we can simply have this as the minimization, but uh, one divided by this as the minimization as well. So if we are maximizing this, uh, one divided by this will be minimized. That's why we will have a division by F2 so that we can have only one minimization of this division function. So this will be now single one single function. 
or we can have a minus of this. A minus will give us minimization as well. Then we will have f1x minus f2x. But of course, we will have some weights in this. If we uh, don't have weights, that means these have uh, the same importance. With these weights, which is the summation of these is 1. Um, if these weights are different than, for example, 0.5 or equality, um, then we will have a, a more important objective function. For instance, this can be 0.7, which means this is more important, slightly more important than this one. This will be 0.3. Or we can make this 1 and make this 0 to just only have this. So we can change the weights to based on our uh, priority or the importance of the fu functions. And this is called weight sum function sum approach. This is one method in multi-objective optimization to be able to make a single function and give some importance to each objective function. And in structural optimization, we use these single and objective uh, optimization formulations with design variables. And a structure that we call is any assemblage of materials intended to sustain loads. Uh, so we have some material uh, with a certain geometry and we, it will be applied a load actually, a load will be applied on them. And structural optimization means making an assemblage of materials, basically a structure that uh, sustain the loads the best way under constraints on mechanical properties of the structure. So we will find the best way of having this design of structure, which will carry the loads uh, safely. So we find some design variables in this scenario, which is similar to a regular optimization problem. But these axes can be geometrical material parameters like cross sections, shape, density, etc. And we want to minimize or maximize a structural objective function. For instance, usually we use weight or volume or compliance, which is actually showing the deformation uh, ability of a structure or stiffness opposite of compliance. Uh, showing the uh, um, the resistance to the deformation or displacement stresses etc these are structural um, objective functions these can be constraints as well these constraints can be volume stress buckling displacement some mechanical properties but usually what we do is if we use something as the objective function we don't use it as the constraint. So if we, for example, we are using volume as the objective function, trying to minimize it, then don't put any limit here for the volume. Maybe you can put a limit, a constraint for displacement or stress or buckling, but not for the objective function. Or here, if we are using minimizing compliance, then don't use compliance here. Use stress volume, especially volume here, if you, if you are not using volume in here. So use one, in the objective, don't use it in the constraints, or use it in constraint, don't use it in the objective function. Of course, then we will have some uh, equality uh, solving of some maybe finite element equation like this, f equals k times u. This is a linear uh, static analysis formulation. And we will have some uh, lower and upper bounds of the design variables. These are called bound constraints. So we have three different structural optimization categories based on the type of the design variables. These are size, shape, and topology optimization. In the size optimization, usually we have some truss members as the structure topology, as you can see here. And when we apply a load on this and we have some boundary conditions, we want to find the optimum thickness values of these trusses or diameters of these truss, basically a cross-section parameter. So it, it will be equal for one truss throughout its cross section like this you can see these will be more uh, these will be thicker than the others and this is called size optimization in the shape optimization this is uh, uh, different from this because we have a local change on the shape so here you can see uh, throughout the direction length direction the size is the same that's why it's called size optimization but the size was changing throughout the length maybe on certain locations, then the shape was changing. 
then it becomes shape optimization here you can see the shape of the circle is changing at some at some sort uh, local regions it can be on the outside as well the outside can change too and uh, this is called shape optimization there is also topology optimization in this we have actually uh, the density of the material as the design variable and the density is uh, changing between 0 and 1 0 means no material because zero density one means full material one density is one so that means we remove material or add material you can see these white regions have zero density that's why we actually remove we are removing material from here compared to the initial topology and we are keeping these uh, black ones as density one or as the material over here so so basically we are changing the topology by removing some materials that's why it's called the topology optimization in other words the internal uh, structure is changing internal relationship of the material is changing which means topology actually so these three can be defined also like a parametric optimization which is size optimization again we are changing a constant size as you can see here uh, in different cross sections also shape optimization in here we are changing local uh, shape of the fun, uh, of the structure and topology optimization we are removing some materials basically similar to this actually these are the same concepts of these so these three structural optimization categories are used in the mechanical engineering or civil engineering widely um, and we use simply the regular mathematical programming or optimization formulations to be able to solve such structural problems in this slide, we will uh, try to understand how to find the best or optimized solution because we have an optimization problem now, but how can we find it? So basically it's mathematical programming and it became popular after computers are discovered. Uh, so we, we will have a mathematical model and we will have a search algorithm, which is the optimization algorithm actually to move in certain direction to find the optimum. Because we have m smaller than n, the number of equations are smaller. We will have a loop here to be able to try certain um, unknown parameter values based on the direction of the search algorithm. And when we find the optimum, we will stop there. So we will have search algorithm. And uh, we actually started with some values of the design variables or unknown variables. Uh, and we with search algorithm we go to a certain value and we use it in the model in the mathematical model then if the results are converging or finding the minimum then we stop if it doesn't converge or it doesn't find the minimum we continue update uh, the design variables based on the search algorithm and go to model again and we continue to this loop until finding the convergence if we find the convergence for a minimum point for instance we can stop and say that this is our optimal, optimized solution. So there are certain search algorithms. The first one is the simplest one, brute force or exhaustive search. This is basically just using uh, many alternatives, uh, trying many alternatives, calculating the uh, model values or results for many alternatives and trying to find the best one among them. Also, there are gradient-free approaches such as stochastic algorithm, genetic algorithm. These don't use the gradient information, but try to use some advanced um, uh, searching algorithms. Um, this, these are out of topic of this class, but maybe in a uh, graduate level class, you can learn about these. Also, we have gradient-based approaches, which is the topic of this class. Uh, we basically use the finite difference or automatic dif differentiation sensitivity analysis the derivative information basically we use derivative information to continue uh, finding a new search algorithm search direction by the search algorithm let's check an example of the exhaustive search so this is the simplest search algorithm and it tries all alternative combinations of design variables this is simple but not efficient because we have to try many things at the same time and find the optimum among them so for, for instance we have a cantilever beam here fixed from left and applied a force from here and we have a length width and thickness we want to find the thickness and width for instance here and we want to minimize the weight of this 
and the weight simply calculated by like uh, using this formulation uh, in the mechanical engineering side you know about how to calculate the weight t times w times l is the volume and rho is the density so we can set a constraint as well which is for example the yield stress is the allowable limit and the stress on this structure should be smaller than this yield stress or at least i mean at most it should be equal otherwise if this is greater this will fail so finding the stress is actually here pretty straightforward basically we have uh, a bending stress which is moment times c divided by i the moment of inertia and c is the distance from the neutral axis here the maximum stress will be here at the top or at the bottom tension or compression that's why c can be uh, t divided by 2 and m is f times the l f times l and i is 1 over 12 bh cube or b is um, the cross section basically here b is the w and h is the t cube from here you can find stresses analytically and check that based on uh, the design variable values that we will try so for instance for t we can try some values between 0 and 10 millimeter for instance we can try like many parameters here between 0 and 10 these all of these for w as well maybe from 0 w to 20 for instance we can try some here 0 and 10 sorry 0 and 20 maybe from here we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 alternatives here also I say 7 alternatives for each of these for example so 0 doesn't make sense but from here let's say this is one for instance we need to try all of these as combinations calculate this one and of course the sigma and to see if the weight is minimized and this satisfies then for all of these so we have seven for instance so then we will use this we will do the same for this for all alternatives and this all alternative and to calculate all of these and this will as you can see very time consuming uh, try all combination of the design variables and calculate the results and see if uh, to to find the minimized weight and uh, satisfy uh, meeting the criteria of this stress so here basically the number of values to try is equivalent to the upper bound of the design variable minus lower bound of the design variable divided by a certain uh, gap let's say between these if we take this for example 0.1 here and tu is 10 and tl is 0 then this becomes 100 evaluations it is the same so if we say epsilon is 0 0.1 for w as well uh, this is 40 for w as well we have 100 evaluations and as we said we will try each of these evaluations for the combination of the other uh, other design variable which means we will have here for instance 100 evaluations and two design variables this much evaluations this is not really efficient so we actually have this here let me raise these to show in here we will have if we say 100 evaluations for one um, we will have 100 to the power 2 evaluation because we have two design variables number of design variable here too so this is really not efficient we need to try all of these and generally we have more design variables maybe uh, then we will have more than 100 to the power 2 that's why we instead of using the exhaustive search we per prefer using efficient more efficient search algorithms and we will talk about those uh, and as we said the topic of this class is gradient based ones so we will talk about the gradient based optimization